Taking a trip to Disneyland is a lot of fun, but it's also a huge time and money commitment. Very so cool. there's a lot of pressure on people to make the trip as great as possible. Now we've made a lot of mistakes along the way. So what we're gonna do is go over some of our biggest mistakes that we've made and talk about 10 things that we wish we would have known before going to Disneyland the first time. What's up guys, he's Brian. And he's Jacob. And we're coming at you with 10 things we wish we would have known when we went to Disneyland. There's a lot of planning involved, which means there's lots of room for mistakes. Now, of course, we're going to this vacation to Disneyland because we want to have an amazing time, right? Disneyland is touted as the most magical place on earth. There's a lot of things that are awesome and a lot of things that can go right, but a lot of things that can go wrong if you don't do it the right way. So in this list, we're talking about some of the things that we wish we would have known. And if you take our advice, you won't make the same mistakes we will. Leading off this list, we're gonna talk about where to watch the fireworks. Mm. So of course, um, if you're planning a trip to Disneyland, a lot of people are gonna recommend you watch the fireworks. And the first time I was there, we were on Main Street and that is the most crowded place in the parks all day long. When the fireworks are happening, you are shoulder to shoulder with everyone. Everybody, yeah, it, it's super crowded. Now, here's what you need to know. Main Street is an awesome place to watch the fireworks because you're getting a straight view of the castle. You've got the visual effects that are happening on Main Street and on the castle. You've got the music, but that's not the only place you can watch fireworks. There's some other great places that are not nearly as crowded. Take for example, the Rivers of America. You can see the fireworks and get a great view from that point. As long as there isn't a um, Fantasmic show getting ready to go on, the place can get kind of crowded if that's happening. But if you go to the other side of the park, over in, uh, over by the uh, Small World Ride, that's a great place to watch the fireworks. There's not a ton of people over there and you still get a really great view of the fireworks. And in Galaxy's Edge, yes. Galaxy's that's a Edge. cool place. I mean, you're not getting the music over there, but, but you do get a really good view of the fireworks. Keep in mind, watching the fireworks doesn't only have to take place in the parks. If you're in what? between Disneyland and California Adventure, there's some great areas that you can just sit and watch the fireworks and it's not nearly as crowded in that area but maybe you've got a hotel that has a good view of the park too right don't take for granted the hotel view some parks or some hotels even have great viewing from the pool right just sit in the hot tub and enjoy the fireworks show yeah. what a great way to end the night okay so something that i wish i would have known when i went to disneyland is that uh it's very important to take uh the 60 days that they offer you to make reservations for like restaurants and actually, you know, do that. So uh, when I went once, I, you know, I waited, I felt like to the last second. And so we weren't able to make reservations for those nice places to eat. Um, we had to use the walk-up window and luckily we were able to get a seat, but just know that's likely not gonna happen, uh, especially with really busy places like uh, the Lamplight Lounge, for instance. Uh, make sure when you are that when you hit that 60 day window at midnight, you can start making reservations. Make sure it's midnight. I know it sounds crazy, but seriously, they'll fill up like an hour later of all the places you thought you know you wanted to eat. So make sure you're taking advantage of that. Um, they do have a 24 hour notice for requirement for like um, uh, canceling reservations. So it's it's not impossible that you won't you know get a spot using the walk up window or walk up lane. Uh, I, we just really recommend you just use those reservations. Here's a bonus tip for you that's not a part of the normal list, but you need to make sure you're researched on everything about the parks before you go to make the most out of your trip. Mm -hmm. If YouTube was available the first time I went to Disneyland, I would have had a much better first trip. So here's what you need to do. Hit that subscribe button. We talk all the time about awesome things that are gonna help with your next Disney trip. So if you subscribe, you're gonna be getting more awesome content just like this to help you plan the perfect vacation. All right, the next thing that I wish I would have known before I went to Disneyland for the first time is how much walking is involved. Uh, yeah. This one catches people off guard and it's something we like to talk about a lot mm -hmm. because of how physically demanding Disneyland is on your body when you're walking all day long. If you wanna get there early in the morning and stay until the fireworks at night, you're gonna be walking 10 plus miles in a day easily. Yeah. If you're not prepared for that, you are in a world of hurt. So making sure that you're prepared by getting the right kind of shoes broken in before the trip, yeah. making sure that you're used to actually walking that much before the trip, those all play huge into making sure that you can take the most advantage of your best trip ever. Something that people don't really think about when they come to Disneyland is actually bringing a backpack. Um, because sometimes people think, oh yeah, I don't wanna be carrying something around in the parks, which is true. You don't wanna be carrying too much in the parks. However, a backpack can be your best friend 
Now, what I mean by that is it's a place to store not just the water that you bring in, maybe a snack or two, but also with that extra room, you're able to put the souvenirs that you buy. And not only is it a, you know, a great thing for carrying souvenirs, but it also can hold things like jackets or if you watch uh, one of our previous videos, uh, flip-flops, because I think that's important. He doesn't, I do. Um, you know, because it does get cold at night and you do get wet and you don't want your shoes to get wet. So that's just something that I recommend, but yep, back pan, backpack, not pan, backpack is your friend. All right, next thing that I wish I would have known before going to Disneyland is about bringing a stroller yeah. or renting a stroller. But just having one available is gonna be awesome. So if you have to even ask the question, should I bring a stroller? The answer is yes. Whether it's for a small child or maybe somebody that might not usually use a stroller, kids are gonna get tired, all yeah. right? You want a safe place for them to just sit and relax. That way they're not wearing themselves out and just making themselves miserable. When kids get tired, they get cranky and then all the magic goes out the window. So make sure they've got a comfortable stroller, whether or not you rent one or bring one from home. Um, stroller is gonna be a big lifesaver, not to mention it's a great place to store your things. So get that stroller. When in doubt, just get it. Another thing that you know some people might not know about Disneyland is that you will be waiting in long lines. Now, sometimes the, those lines may be five minutes. Uh, that's not always the case. A lot of the times it's more like an hour uh, hour and a half, sometimes two hours, if you're really die hard and need to get on that ride at that time. Um, just know that this is unavoidable. Uh, you know, if you wanna check out one of our other videos though, we can teach you how to survive those pesky lines. Uh, but just know it's unavoidable. Make sure you're keeping an eye on that app. Uh, we don't want you waiting in long lines if you don't have to. Making sure you're looking at the other side of the park. Yes, you have to walk to the other side of the park, but that line's only five minutes, or you could go to the 60 minute one next to you. So, what you gonna choose? All right, something else I wish I really would have known before I went to Disneyland the first time is that getting up early is totally mm -hmm. worth it. This guy is tired, but he still got up early, and guess what? We were able to take advantage of all the short lines. Crowds are amazing when you yes. first get to the parks. When you get there early, we're talking about rope drop rope. early, you're gonna show up an hour to a half hour before the park opens. That way you can get in and get to the front of a lot of those lines during that first peak hour, two hours when the park opens right after rope drop, you're gonna be getting in line and getting on the rides with very minimal wait time. We're talking five, 10 minutes at the most in a lot of cases. Awesome. So if you don't take advantage of this, you're missing out on a big opportunity to have an awesome start to your day. So Disney Genie Plus. Now a lot of people don't like to hear that word or that term, but it's important to know how to use it. So it's something that you know wasn't around during our first time going to Disneyland. Uh, it's what it is now. So you know we just have to get used to it and learn how to use it properly. Um, there is a right way to use it. Um, this is a great way to utilize uh, the Lightning Lanes, which is like Express Lane that allows you to get on rides a lot quicker than you know you'd see the standby uh, wait times. Um, it's you know the photo pass is involved in that as well, so you get those photos after you know going on those rides. Um, it also you know allows you. I mean, the regular Genie will also allow you to you know make sure you understand which you know rides might be popping up um, that are available. That's you know that you're the most interested in. So it's important to learn how to use it and utilize it correctly. And Genie Plus can be confusing. So if you're wanting mm -hmm. some more information about the right way to use it, check out a link in the description down below. We've got you covered on how to use Genie Plus the right way. Here's something that's really overlooked by a lot of people, and even those that have gone to Disneyland a few times might not be aware of it, but you can bring your own food into the parks. Disney food's expensive, and even if you budget in for that food, you might still get hungry in the middle of a line, so having your own snacks available in your backpack is awesome, mm -hmm. all right? Bring your own food into the parks, just make sure that it's in a safe container, so no glass containers are allowed but you know, just stick your trail mix or your granola bars in your backpack and you're gonna be set to go. No ice cream. Another thing that I wish I would have known when I went to Disneyland, especially the first time, is you don't have to do everything in the parks in one day or in one trip. I know it's crazy, just listen up. Trust me, trust me. You don't have to stress yourself out uh, trying to do every single thing that's offered in the Disney parks. Um, there will be an opportunity, I'm sure, in the future for you to come back it's not worth the stress. Enjoy your time there. If you're there with your kids, enjoy your kids. You know, that's probably gonna be the best part of your trip. It isn't necessarily the rights for you, is you're gonna see expression on their face when they see Mickey or any of the other characters. Uh, just make sure, you know, you, you plan ahead, make sure you know what you're doing in the parks. Uh, you know, make sure you do a must-do list with your family if you're going with, or if you're going with a group. Um, try to decide on what things are most important that you for sure need to get done uh, or you'll regret it on that trip. 
but don't stress yourselves out, yourselves out about you know trying to get everything done in one day. It's not worth the stress. You can come back and you can do the things that you've missed. All right, something else that we wish we would have known earlier is that you don't actually have to pay for bottled water. I'm not saying you can get bottled water for free, but you can bring your own bottle with you. This is a great way to save money because water can be really expensive. You need to stay hydrated when you're exercising that much, walking all throughout the parks, especially in the hot seasons, right? You're sweating and you're at risk of dehydration a lot more than you realize. So you need to stay hydrated by drinking lots of water. Bringing your own bottle is gonna save you so much because there's a lot of refill stations available. You can also get free cups of water to pour onto that bottle. So bring your own from home, make sure it's insulated so the water stays cold. But yeah, you don't have to be wasting your money every time you need a bottle of water. Well, we hope you guys enjoyed this video. And we hope that it's a lot of good information that you're gonna use the next time you're in the parks. Let us know in the comments below, uh, you know, what stuff we may have missed. What kind of things, you know, uh, do you wish you would have known on your first trip to Disneyland? And I just wanted to interject here and end this video just a little bit differently because we've got a really big announcement happening right now. Actually, we're just about to a thousand subscribers. In fact, by the time this video goes live, we might be at that milestone already. So a big, huge thank you to everybody that's been with us, especially those of you that stuck around from the beginning. We've been um, doing this YouTube channel for coming up on a year here in a few months. And to hit a thousand subscribers, it's a really big deal to us. Um, big thank you to everybody that's been liking and commenting and sharing our channel. Uh, and as a way for us to give back to that community that we've been building, uh, we've got a lot of uh, prizes we're gonna be giving away here shortly. We've got some cool keychains. We've got playing cards. We've got limited edition pins. Uh, I've got this awesome Tiki Room cup. And there's more prizes to come as well. We're gonna be making an announcement about exactly what that looks like. Um, possibly even doing our first live stream where we're going to be giving away a lot of those prizes. So um, just stay tuned and you guys will be hearing those announcements shortly. But uh, thanks again for hanging out and watching these videos. Thanks for all the support over these uh, last several months we've been doing these videos. Um, there's more special stuff to come. So just want to give a big thank you. And as always, thanks for watching.